Yes, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. I hope you guys are all enjoying your week so far, enjoying your Wednesday, enjoying the dreary, rainy weather in Newcastle today. I've come outside. I think I've hopefully got a 10 minute gap where it stopped raining for a minute. I hope we'll get some sun this August. A bit of sun in June, Ming in July, hopefully, start of the season, sunny weather in August. Happy days. Uh, but we're not here to talk about the sun. Uh, we're here to talk about the fact that this morning, Newcastle have reversed, done a U-turn and made changes to their initial proposal of how tickets would be sold for matches at St. James's Park this season. Uh, we'll get into that. I want to talk a little bit about the Seller Cup as well. There's a few more things coming out on that one regarding tickets. So we'll get into that as well. And we'll finish off with a bit of transfer news as well. It looks like a Newcastle player may have already left the club and already be training with another side. Uh, so we'll talk about that shortly. But we will start off with um, the tickets. Yesterday, Newcastle released their plans on how tickets would be sold. To start things off, uh, you know, a week before the season starts, you know, possibly could have done with this information a little bit sooner. I still think that digital tickets generally has, you know, caused a bit of a fuss, you know, releasing digital tickets two weeks before the season starts. If you don't have a smartphone, you've got a, a week to get to the box office to get that sort of thing. I think the big thing for me, as much as anything, was the, uh, the amount of time they've given fans to react to all of this. If this had all been announced two months ago, I think the reaction would have been less. I think it would have given people a chance to go, well, hang on a second. That's not really going to work. Or if it is going to work like that, at least give us the time to go and deal with it. But skipping ahead, the, the main reason people really kicked off yesterday, and I think very understandably why the Newcastle Trust was involved, they were contacting the club. Um, and it was all to do with the way the new membership scheme was working and how tickets were being sold. Um, not to go through it all again from yesterday, but I will say actually as well, by the way, jumped on yesterday to talk about the mistakes that were being made by the club. Lots of people were quick to act and say, hang on a second, this isn't right. It shouldn't be done this way. And effectively what was announced was that tickets would be sold on a ballot. Um, so rather than logging on at 10 a.m. and buying your seat if you want to sit you know, in the Leasers or in the East Stand or in the Gallagher. And if you want to sit near the pitch, it'll be 50 quid. If you want to sit in the corporate, it's 70, 80 quid. If you want to sit right at the back of level six, it'll be 35 quid. Instead of having those options, instead, it was just a tick box. Tick. And if you got a 30 pound ticket, 40 pound, 50 pound, 75 pound tickets, that was what you were given. There was no option. If you imagine it was me, your friend, um, brother, sister, dad, Uncle, whoever, five, six people, if you're getting, you know, four tickets at 30 quid, you know, that's 120 quid. Hang on a second, we didn't get the 30 pound ones, we got the 75 pound ones. And now we're paying 210 quid, so straight away, that's poor. And if you're doing that for 20 games in a season, you've paid double the amount you would have liked to. So yes, rightly so, Newcastle fans were unhappy. But I was also say, you know, as much as we jumped on to criticise... Newcastle fan, Newcastle United have reacted very quickly. In, in less than 24 hours, they've jumped in, they've made changes, and now effectively you're able to pick which category of ticket you would like to go in for on the ballot. Now, it's not perfect, not, nothing's quite perfect yet, and I think it could take seasons to get it perfect, to be honest. I don't think it's going to happen, as I say, between now and Aston Villa in a week and a half's time. It will take time to have a situation where everybody's happy, but what they have done is reacted fast. And I will also say that other people on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, the fans have also praised, this, the, um, praised the owners as well to say, well done. You have moved quick. You've tried to resolve something that a lot of people felt quite unhappy with and as I say it's not perfect but they've taken a step and it now means that you are not being you know stopped from going to watch your local team because you can't afford the more expensive seats in the ground and um, unfortunately I will say that I think tickets will continue to get more expensive as time goes on and I think that will be a constant problem because the the demand is so high you know, it's it's not necessarily in keeping with the fans of the area who work hard and don't necessarily have that kind of money to be spending every week. Um, 
we need a bigger stadium. That, that's the answer. That's the long, the long and short is that it needs to be a bigger stadium. The bigger stadium, the more seats they have, the the you know the the, the less the prices would would generally be as 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 it is. But uh, but yeah. So well done to the owners on making that quick U-turn. Darren Eels came out and did release a statement to say that they had heard the calls of the fans. They want to make things right. They want to get things as close to, you know. Um, where the fans and the clubs see see it should be and it was as i say a great to see a quick fix um and i think there is still a few more tweaks that will be coming with that in terms of you know selecting the option of ticket or, or selecting the band of, of pricing that comes down but yeah well done to yours and, and everyone's talking about you know the interview that man stavely did not so long ago where they said they're going to work hard they're not always going to get things right but they'll always work hard to fix things when they're not right and there's the example. And that's the thing. If they'd done nothing, I think there would have been a real upset or a, a, a selection of very upset Newcastle fans because they've gone in and fixed it. Yes, it's not perfect, but they've gone in and done something. And I think that's that should be applauded. You know, it should be applauded. And hopefully in the next few years, we'll get closer to where we want to be. I don't think it changes the overall problem with the, the, the digital tickets. Like, there hasn't been enough time on that. I still haven't actually downloaded mine. I tried to do it the other day. It didn't work. I need to try and download it because if it doesn't, if I don't get it working in the next few days, I'm going to have to go to the box office to sort it out. You know, all the generation of people who don't have smartphones, where are they going? Have they got time to get it? Yeah, I won't get into all of that. But they have acted quickly on the price, and, and that is a big thing. Um, in terms of seller, seller um, tournament this weekend, it was um, actually revealed that there will be cash um, turnstiles at the game. If you would like to go down and watch the game this weekend, there is a possibility if you don't get your ticket ahead of time, you can actually go down and pay by cash, which I think is a slightly odd move, to be honest. I think that if you are going, I would buy it ahead of time. I would go online and buy it now. Um, that was uh, written and um, in by the Chronicle today that Peter Silverstone has said they are looking to add some, some cash turnstiles. I would say go ahead and and book it ahead of time. I, I don't know if it's because they haven't sold as many tickets. They're now saying that they want to try and leave the option open late at later doors for people to still come down. You didn't get your ticket, don't worry, there's still seats. But we haven't opened level six. Are we gonna open level six? I would imagine not, especially if they're talking about opening cash turnstiles. That would suggest that they really aren't close to selling out the seats that they've already opened up and you know, I think the the seller tournament ones. Are, and if they had, you know, I think Barcelona, Real Madrid, you know, that would sell. That you know, Nice play versus you know Villarreal is the morning game. Newcastle versus Florentina is the middle of the day game. You know, how many people are going to that early game? You know, and we're being charged for that game. You know, if it was Barcelona, Real Madrid, I would be down. I'd be there at nine in the morning. I'd sit there and watch every every, every game all the way through at the end of the day. But because it's not. I think that's possibly turned a few people off. You know, £30 to go and watch a Newcastle match, that's how much it will cost for an FA Cup ticket this season. So I understand how they've done it. Let's make it a tournament. Let's put loads of games in. Oh, well, actually, I only, you know, I'm, I want to watch the Newcastle game. Oh, I might stick around for the, the women's game after as well. But, you know, it's, it's, they've tried to really big it up. I also feel like the women's team should have had their own friendly day. Get them on. You know, get them in St. James. They've been selling out 25, 30,000. For the fans, anyway, I don't think they needed to be, you know, pushed into this this tournament situation. I think they could have held their own right at St James's Park and got a thirty thousand crown on their own. Instead, now they're being shoehorned in with with all this other stuff. So, you let me know your thoughts on that one down below. And you know, cash turnstiles. You know, is it thirty quid on the door? Is you have to pay by cash? Is it? Is it gonna? What happens if you get down there and there's a huge influx of people? Christ, open up level six because we've we've actually sold more than we thought we did. You know, I. I think it's an odd move as well. So, yeah, uh, get your tickets beforehand is my advice on that one. And just to finish off with a little bit of transfer news, we've spoken about the Livermento deal that appears to be one that Newcastle are still trying to work on. I actually had someone comment down below on my last video saying, we don't need Livermento. We've got Ashby. He's the man that will replace Trippier. I mean, I'm on your side, mate. I would have loved to see that as well. But it seems to be that Ashby, as according to a few photos, is already... Trading with them, um, trading over in Swansea. That's right, he's been heavily linked with a loan move there and some uh, detective work by some Swansea fans looking at some of the, the training ground photos has actually found either a bloke who has the exact same tattoo as Ashby on his arm or it's him. Uh, so it's not confirmed. It could just be someone who went to the same tattoo 
artist and they both like the same arm sleeve but regardless it does look like um ashby could be heading out on loan anyway and then we left with trippier mankio and crafty there's not been much said about Mankio recently and Crafty, um, it's understood that he's getting much closer to training again. So, you know, could it be that we'll be sticking with the three of them or is the Livermento deal still on the cards? You let me know your thoughts on the Livermento down below, whether Ashby will be heading out and um, your thoughts on the U-turn done by Newcastle on tickets. And if you're going to the Salah Cup as well, if you're excited for it, are you going to go to all the games? Are you going to be there all, all Saturday, all Sunday? You let me know down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.